Hey everybody, final thoughts. Time for Stella, a Dixit Universe game, and oh boy. Jen and I love Dixit. Uh, we have loved it ever since the first time we played it so many years ago, and uh, we love it so much. Up until now, it has been the only game in our collection that does not work for two players. That it requires at least three, and uh, which means Jen and I almost never ever get to play it. We only play it once every few years when we happen to have other people around because it's such a wonderful game for meeting people and getting to know people and how they think and all about that. And uh, and it's just so beautiful. Dixit has always been all about these stunningly gorgeous cards. And so, when I learned a new game in the Dixit universe was coming, Stella, which is Italian for star, by the way, because... Oddly, this is is this the first Dixit game that actually has a theme? We are star catchers flying into the nighttime sky to catch energy from stars, and that means thematically that we are all trying and these cards represent the stars that we're trying to grab. And if all of us grab it, we only get so many points. If only two of us grab it, we get a lot of points. If nobody grabs it, we lose points. And there's a danger of going too high into the nighttime sky because if we are in the dark and we bust, because there's a really cool push your luck element to this this game, then we come crashing back to Earth, and we lose a lot of points along the way. I mean, Dixie has never had a theme. It's nice that it's here, but all of that aside, this is just a wonderful new twist. And in some ways, I think it is superior to the original Dixit. And again, that is saying something because we have kept our copy around forever. The main thing is, in regular Dixit, everybody has a hand of cards and the storyteller picks one in secret, assigns a phrase, a term, a word, a, uh, a sound, whatever it might be, to that card. And then everybody else picks cards and then all the cards are revealed. Nobody knows whose is anybody's. And everybody has to guess uh, the storyteller, the player who came up with the word, which one was theirs. That is a great game and it fosters a sense of creativity and imagination and learning how other people think. The thing that Stella does, turns the whole thing on its ear, is all the cards are already out on the board. Everybody has access to the same information and we draw a card from this deck and it tells us, oh, the word, the secret clue is wonder. Or maybe it's discipline. Or um, lazy. Or Brittany. And if people say, oh, it's Brittany, I, Brittany, what? Is that, what do you mean by that? You could always say, no, okay, let's let it be lazy instead. Or Australia. Or religion. Or temptation. Or Egypt. Or argument. Or casino. Or artist. Or routine. These are all the kinds of terms you might see showing up in a regular game of Dixit. But in this game, the game chooses the clue. And I gotta say, that is a really great breath of fresh air because it means a lot of pressure is taken off. Dixit is a wonderful experience, but I have definitely played it with people who are really uncomfortable because it comes when it comes for them to decide, all right, I don't know what to clue to choose. That is such a huge leap. For some people, it's not one they're comfortable making. And this game is like, oh, okay, the secret word is zombie. All right, well then I'll just figure out which ones of these I think work for zombie. As opposed for me trying to do all this extra mental creative gymnastics. Don't get me wrong. Dixit is great for that. But this, I think, it's so much easier to teach. You can just be up and running in almost no time. There's no weird persnickety rules. There, you just have to tell people one thing. Um, whatever the word is, pick as many as you can that you think fit. You're trying to get matches with other people. If you pick too many, if you pick more than anybody else, you'll be in the dark and you run the risk of, of crash, of when you fall, losing points. So be careful. Push your luck. Pick as many as you can, but be careful about picking too many because it could bite you in the butt. That's it. I've just taught you all the rules for the game. And then it just plays. And here's the beautiful thing. There's really two games here. There's the first half of a round. You play over four rounds where you're just trying to pick and you're using creativity. You're trying to come up because you will have to justify your reasons you picked cards later on. Believe me, when it comes revealed and everybody says, why did you pick that card? That has absolutely nothing to do with um, Egypt or whatever. Well... Yeah, that gives that gives everybody around the table the opportunity to laugh and hear the explanation and learn a bit more about how that person thinks. That's always been the beauty of Dixit. Stella, though, gives you all of that without the pressure, without the need to perform, to come up with something really clever that gets everybody saying, wow. Instead, you're like, no, I just came up with the best things I could do. So it's much more approachable. But anyway, 
The first half of the game, picking your stuff, that's just fun. It's a fun little puzzle. You could also try to get in your head if you know the other people. Well, what are they going to choose? Because you want to have matches with them and all that. But then there's this whole second half of the game. And some people might think, oh, that's just a really boring... Oh, you just you just score points, right? You just take turns, and why does this take forever? But it's a brilliant element because if these are all the things I've chosen, I have to pick... When it comes around to me and I have to pick one of these, I better pick one that I'm relatively confident of. Or um, I might risk busting because... It if I reveal this one, and it turns out nobody else picked that, I am out for the rest of the round. And that is painful, because then everybody else could still score points off of the stuff I chose, but I can't score points off anybody else. So you have to be really, really smart um, about how you pick these, and save the tougher, riskier ones for later. Um, but then there's that extra twist, because Dixit has a twist, and so does Stella. If only two people pick this card, which means it was a risky one. I mean, if you look at this, you know, okay, everybody's going to choose this. Everybody, Everybody's going to choose this one for uh, zombie because it's clearly, it's an apocalypse. There's destroyed stuff and all that. I know this is a safe one. I could pick this one. Um, but you know what? I know somebody else is going to pick it. I could pick this one. This one, I don't know if everybody's going to choose it. But I think you're going to. Because if only you and I pick it, we get bonus points out of it. Once three or more people pick a thing, it's worth two points. But if only two people pick it, it's worth three points. And that could be winning the game. Because it's those risky ones that you want to play to score those three points. Um, but the worst thing is, okay, I, I'm not going to play the... I'll save those later. This one is safe. And then you pick that. And nobody picked that one. The one you thought was so obvious. You were just in a different mental space and nobody else picked it. And now, boom, you can't score all your other ones. So there is some really interesting decision-making to be made to, to gamble and risk. How are you going to score points when we get to the second half of every round? And we get to do it four times. And it is fun from start to finish. Now, if you just watched the run-through, you only saw just me, Ruel, and Jen playing the first round. But as I said, we did finish the whole game. And if you'd like to watch the rest of the game where we invited the internet to join us, oh, we had such a great time. Hit that eye in the top right corner screen to go follow the show notes, and you can watch uh, the live stream that we did and see rounds two, three, and four. And it got crazy. All kinds of fun stuff showed up. But hopefully, just the first round gave you an idea of the decision-making that goes in uh, that makes Stella a wonderful, wonderful little game and a wonderful sequel that I might actually prefer over the original Dixit. And that's Stella Dixit Universe. Thanks for watching, everybody. Have a nice day. Talk to you later. So long. Bye-bye.